People ask, where do you get your ideas? Well, right here. All of this is my Martian landscape. Somewhere in this room is an African veldt. Just beyond, perhaps, is a small Illinois town where I grew up. And I'm surrounded on every side by my magician's toy shop. I'll never starve here. I just look around, find what I need, and begin. I'm Ray Bradbury, and this is... Well then, right now, what shall it be? Out of all this, what do I choose to make a story? I never know where the next one will take me. And the trip, exactly one half exhilaration, exactly one half terror. Dog, sure. Look at that. Oak leaf. Maple. Oh, a wheat husk. Oh, no. Flowers from Mr. Tarkin's front yard. Oh, a dandelion. Fourth of July firecracker? A dud. Hey, what's this? That's a great shape. Collector's item. Oh, what a dog. Well, you're perfect. That dog of yours is in trouble again. He's always digging places. He just dug a hole in Mr. Tarkin's garden. He's spitting mad. That's the fourth hole he's dug there this week. Well, maybe he's looking for something. Fiddlesticks. He's too darn curious. And these things he brings home where they've been. Junk and garbage, that's all it is. It's not going to do you any good to go touching what he's dug. Now, if he doesn't behave himself, he'll be locked up. Oh, you wouldn't do that. I mean, how would I learn anything? How would I find out things if Dog didn't tell me? There's nothing I don't know when he goes out and around and back. Nothing I can't find out from him. I mean, Dog is the only real friend I've got. Martin. If Dog will just stop digging where he shouldn't, he can run all he wants. Meantime, we'll probably have Mr. Tarkin here any moment yelling. No, ma'am. 
Look, I made it myself. If he can bring back all these things, why not people? Martin Bailey owns me. Sick in bed. Needs company. Follow me. It won't. It will. A dog can do anything, right? Okay, bring company. Ready, set, go fetch. Warren, come on, let's go. Do I know you? Oh, so that's where my missing sixth grade student is. Well, eat on, Faithful Scout. Yeah, come on, let's go. <laughs> Come on in. Come here. Hey, good boy. Company. Hello, Martin. I'm Miss Haight. I'm your teacher. Or I will be as soon as you're well enough to come to school. I heard you moved into town and that you were sick. I'm sorry I haven't been to visit you sooner. Thank goodness for Dog. Well, Martin, I guess I owe Dog an apology. Well, now. What can we do to get you well? Perhaps a book? A book? I was taking it home to read. The Call of the Wild? It's about a dog. We're going to take it in class later this year. But there's no reason why you shouldn't get a head start. That is, if you have the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I've got. Seems like I've been in this bed for as long as I can remember. Your dog is a fine emissary, Martin. Emissary? Your representative, your scout, bringing people back to you. Yeah, people and things. My mother calls it junk. Will you come back and visit? Of course. And I'll keep coming back until we get you well and out of this bed. with its wriggling tentacles, all eight of them, seized at Captain Nemo's Nautilus submarine and rocked it in its mighty grasp. The sailors yelled. The guns, cried Captain Nemo. Quick, now the guns or we are lost. The squid seized the sailor, brandished him into the tidal seas, never to be seen again. 
Let me see. Martin Bailey. Meet Jules Verne. Sand from the Sahara. Pyramids. Sphinx. Buried treasure. An oak leaf. From Sherwood Forest. So Robin Hood has sent his greetings, has he, dog? <laughs> You're quite a traveler. A wheat sheaf. From the far west. Jesse James and the dust that rides up from his horse's hooves. Mm -hmm. Dog brings the whole world back to me. Dog is very special, Martin. But so are you. You know that, don't you? Life? It's a big subject. Well, I couldn't help but notice. Writing's nothing to be embarrassed about, Martin. It's a wonderful gift. You're going to grow up to be the world's greatest writer. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind. What have you written first? About this super great autumn and you. And Dog, my two greatest friends. May I? Sure, I guess. On Saturday and Sunday, we talked. We never stopped talking and laughing. Her hair was soft, shining like the season outside the window. She walked clear, clean, and quick. A heart beat warm in the bitter afternoon. Anyone hungry? He is. I have to go. No, dog, don't. It's gotten into you. Quit. Bad dream, dog. Get well. Hurry up. I'll be waiting. Last night. Car crash. Just gone. I could just... No. Stay. It's 
better this way. Oh gosh, I'm never gonna see her again. dog. Well, at long last, welcome to the land of the living. What do they do out there all the time? Out there? In the graveyard, Mom, under the ground. Do they just lay there? Lie there. Lie there. I mean, is that all they do? It doesn't seem like much fun. Oh, for goodness sake, it's not made out to be fun. Well, why don't they jump up and run around once in a while if they get tired of lying there? I mean, God's pretty silly. Martin. Well, you think he'd treat people better than to tell them to lie still for keeps. It's impossible. Nobody can do that. I tried once. Dog tries. I say, dead dog. And he lies down and plays dead for a while. But then he gets sick and tired and he wags his tail or he opens one eye and looks at me bored. Boy, I bet sometimes those graveyard people do the same, huh, Doc? Be still with that kind of talk. I bet that's exactly what they do. Martin. Dog. Dog. Hey, dog. Where are you? Christmas hate now, dog. What if he never comes back? It's only been a day, son. I'll call the pound in the morning, okay? 
We won't be late. We're just playing bridge across at the Underhills. I think all the trick-or-treaters have gone. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Enough, you've got to come home. Now. Come to me. 